guys. Welcome. How are you doing? Good. I have a question for you. Do you know what you can do with a coffee machine besides making coffee? Any guesses? What? One of the things. Another thing is you can actually make hot plates, pancakes on the hot plate of the coffee machine. So let me tell you. This one morning, I wake up early, and at the time, I'm studying sustainable development at Utrecht University. And I live in this typical Dutch student house, and you all know that. It's noisy, messy, a lot of fun, and very, very dirty. So the coffee machine is actually the cleanest thing in our house. So I stumble out of my room into the kitchen, make myself coffee, because I really need coffee. And in the meantime, I prepare the batter to make pancakes on a hot plate. Coffee is done, pour myself a cup of ambition, and I pour the batter on the hot plate. Walk back to my room, and as I'm standing in my room, I start smelling something odd. And now there's a lot of odd smells in a Dutch student house. <laughs> but this is different. It smells burned. So I run back to the kitchen, and I see smoke coming out of the coffee machine. I'm thinking, oh no. And while I was half asleep, I had forgotten to put aluminum foil over the hot plate, and the batter had seeped into the sides of the coffee machine. And that is the morning our coffee machine died. <laughs> but it is also the morning that gave rise to my next endeavor. Uh, so after class, because I still had to go to class, I take the coffee machine to a repair store. Uh, they are very rare these days. And I walk into the store, and the shopkeeper is of the type equally rare. And I ask him, so, do you have any spare parts so I can repair the coffee machine? And he gives me this confused look. No, no, I, I don't have any spare parts. You cannot repair this machine. You, should have to buy, you will have to buy a new one. And it's much cheaper as well. Uh, and because I love coffee, that is what I did. And the next morning, I'm again making pancakes on the hot plate, and now definitely on a new coffee machine, because that is for sure the cleanest thing in our house. And I'm thinking, how ridiculous is that? Just because one part is broken, we throw away a perfectly well-functioning machine? That's weird. Why do we do that? And is that normal? And because it's normal, does that make it right? And at that point in time, I decide, even though I'm just one element in the system, and it's a huge system of take, make, waste production, I decide I want to change that. I want to change status quo, because I think status quo is ridiculous. And over the course of many lunches, I start figuring out how that system works. What are the dots? How are the dots connected? And where can I have an impact? And I discover many, many things during these lunches, amongst others, where the best order food in Utrecht, but more importantly, I discovered the power of a circular economy. And a circular economy is an economy in which waste does not exist. And the best example I can give you is the example of a tree. So a tree takes nutrients from the, from the ground, and it grows leaves and fruits, and it feeds animals, and it converts carbon dioxide to oxygen. And then in autumn, the leaves fall off, and then it provides nutrients for other organisms, and then the cycle starts all over again. So nothing is waste, and nothing is wasted. And now think about how far we are from that ideal in our society. We even created plastic soups in our ocean. And another thing, this example of the tree is an example on a very small scale. But our economy is globalized. This vest I'm wearing is from China. The dress I'm wearing is from Bangladesh. The sandwich with hagelslag I had this morning, France and West Africa. And if I start talking about where the materials in your phone come from, I will definitely lose your attention. But then I realized that is the problem. There are so many steps in the production chain that we have no idea what's in our products eventually. We don't know the quality or the exact composition, and we don't know the word, so we just throw it away. And I found out we each year throw away two trillion, two trillion 
worth of materials, an insane amount. Look at the opportunities. And I started Googling, like, what are the opportunities? I can see many. Is there are other people that saw these opportunities. I found awesome examples. I already told you I love coffee. We in the Netherlands, on average, drink the most coffee in the world. And previously, we did nothing with the coffee grounds. We just threw it away. But now, there's a, a company from friends of mine. They started a thriving business using these coffee grounds to grow mushrooms. And no, it's not the kind of mushrooms you laugh about now. <laughs> and, another, and another example is of carpets. In student houses we live in, the carpets, their lifespan is very, very short. There's an awesome company in Australia that takes these carpets, converts them into new bikes. So cool. But I started thinking, these examples are still examples on a small scale. And I want something big. I want to change that, the whole system. So fast forward many lunches, and I come up with the idea of a resources passport. And a resources passport is a Google-like database where you track and trace all the steps of a product and the materials in a product over the life cycle. So you have information about the origin, about the quality, about the exact composition, about the worth of the materials, because you now know what's in it. And I thought the applications are infinite as a designer. You can now ch choose to design your product with recycled materials, because you know what the quality is. As a consumer, you can decide you do not want to buy a phone that has conflict materials in it. And as a waste processor, it's now so much easier to get your business case around it, because you now know what's in your waste, so you know what it's worth and what you need to invest. But the fact that I thought this system was awesome didn't necessarily mean other people thought the same. So I started thinking, and I realized that just as with my system, where I connected the dots to connect information in a new way, the application of my system also depended on the connections I was able to make. So I had to go out there, and I had to give a presentation, but I was scared, because my idea wasn't necessarily complete, or flawless, or the best. And I still had to do it, so every time I had to give a presentation, my heart was pounding and my palms were sweaty. And they asked me questions that I didn't know the answer to. That made me feel terrible. And I got critical remarks. But eventually, my idea improved because of that. And I am very proud to tell you today that my idea of a resources passport has been made into European and Dutch policy, and a big international corporate is programming the algorithm. How awesome is that? So, that all happened because I dared making connections. And that is also what I want you to see today. The power of making connections. Your future is dependent on the connections you are going to be able to make. And let us look at some recent successful businesses. Facebook, LinkedIn, Uber, Instagram, Airbnb. They all disrupted their industry because they knew how to leverage the power of connections. Airbnb. They now rent out more rooms a night than the biggest hotel chain in the world. More rooms a night. And they don't even own any property. How cool is that? Just because they know how to make connections. And things are changing fast. A couple of years ago, Airbnb didn't exist. Nobody saw them coming, especially not the biggest hotel chain. So they didn't know what to do. They weren't prepared. And factor in things like 3D printing, nanotechnology, biotechnology, AI, and we have this amazing mix of potential. But it's getting so complex. And it's like a tsunami of information that's racing towards us. And how are we going to make sure that we are going to serve that wave instead of drown? How are we going to do that? And that is in the power of making connections. And you can do that too. And you do not have to do that alone. No. Doing that together is part of that. And when I realized that, I also knew what my next step was going to be. I was going to help facilitate making these connections. So now, every Wednesday night, and I know people here have been there, speakers as well, but also people in the audience, 
I host a dinner for people that want to change status quo, that want to disrupt the system or themselves. And in an environment where nothing is too crazy and no idea is too out there and everything is good enough, we start thinking, how can we come up with new connections? Like making pancakes on a hot plate. How can we innovate, connect the dots in a different way? Like coming up with a resources passport. And how can we do that together, share, improve? And each week we invite new people. We've had journalists from China, diplomats from Nigeria, artists from Peru. And the perspective they bring, it's amazing. And the ideas that come from that are awesome. And I'm not the only one organizing these dinners. It's at five places in the world already, and we're growing. And here today, I want you to, during breakfast, invite you to think about how you educate yourself, how you come up with new connections. During lunch, I want you to think about new ways to connect the dots, innovate. And during dinner, I want you to share, engage, and scale up. And if you're equally excited as I am about that, there's only one thing for me left to say, and that is, enjoy your meals. <laughs>